Hello guys, welcome back to the FE exam review series where we solve FE problems that's going to help you guys pass your FE exam. In today's video, we're going to do another heat transfer problem, specifically under part A, conduction. So let's dive in. Oh yeah, a copper sphere with a diameter of 60 millimeters is initially at a uniform temperature of 120 degrees Celsius. It is suddenly placed in an air environment at a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. We are giving the convective heat transfer coefficients of the air and the thermal conductivity of the copper, and we want to determine which of the following is true. It also does say select all that apply, which means we could have more than one correct multiple choice. Now, let's go over the options that we have. So the temperature gradients within the sphere are negligible. The lumped capacitance is not applicable. The lumped capacitance is applicable, and then the sphere experiences significant internal temperature gradients. So what we're going to do here, guys, is we're going to go over some of the concepts so that way you guys can try this problem on your own and then you can come back and then check your solution. Now, the first thing guys to note here is that we have a heat transfer to a solid material, which is the sphere, right? So which means we have conduction. Now, the other thing also to note is that we have a transient conduction. And the reason why we have transient conduction is because we have a sudden change. So we take the copper sphere that is at a temperature of 120 degrees Celsius, and we place it in an environment that has a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. So we have a sudden change in temperature. And so the sphere will experience a transient conduction until its temperature eventually stabilizes. Now, during the transient conduction, the temperature at any point within an object does not remain constant, but it changes over time. And it can actually be very complex to solve these type of problems. But there are methods that we can use to simplify it. And one of those methods is the lumped capacitance. Now, the problem is that we can only use the lumped capacitance is if the BO number is less than 0 0.1, okay? So when the BO number is less than 0 0.1, it indicates that the temperature variation within the objects is small enough that it can be negligible, okay? So that's one of the assumptions that we make when we use the lumped capacitance. So those are the concepts behind this problem. And you guys will see in a little bit why it's important to know these concepts. The other thing I would like to mention that it's very important that you guys, when you're studying for the FE exam, make sure that you guys focus on the concepts. Make sure you understand the concepts behind the equations, especially because now on the FE exam, you get a lot of conceptual questions okay the other thing too is that if you are looking for a study material that has great fe problems and also goes over the concepts make sure that you guys check out our latest course so we just launched the fe mechanical course uh, it is not complete yet. We still have to upload one more subject, which is the mechanical design and analysis, but we are almost done with the course. So make sure that you guys check it out. Now, if you are taking FE other disciplines, now we will uh, launch FE other disciplines course as well. So make sure that you guys sign up here for any future updates. Now you are probably wondering, okay, so what do I do with all this information? Well, here's the thing, guys. So one of the multiple choices that we have here is lumped capacitance, right? So we want to know if it is applicable or not. And as I mentioned before, we can use lumped capacitance if the BO number is less than 0 0.1, okay? Now, the BO number equation is provided to you guys on the reference handbook under uh, heat transfer, so you can look that up solve for it, and then go from there. So why don't you guys give this problem a try, and I will see you in a little bit. Now, if you guys are enjoying this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It helps the channel out immensely. And also, something I forgot to mention earlier, guys, is try to add all these concepts that we covered to your cheat sheet. And also, make sure that you guys create your own cheat sheet, add all the important equations and concepts that you are learning, and make sure that you guys review those notes right before your FE exam, so that way you guys can remember them. And also, we do have a cheat sheet, so if you are interested in getting that cheat sheet, make sure that you guys download it here. And if you don't get it to your email, make sure you email us and we can send it to you. Now, in this cheat sheet, we have a lot of important equations and concepts that we tried to cover so that way you guys remember it for your FE exam. 
Okay guys, so back to the problem. So as we mentioned earlier, the first thing we got to do here is try to solve for the BO number, right? Because if BO number is less than 0 0.1, that means lumped capacitance is applicable. If it is greater than 0 0.1, that means it's not applicable, okay? So let's go to the reference handbook and take a look at the equation. So if you guys go to the heat transfer section under uh, conduction here, you guys have transient conduction, which we talked about. And so here it says, the lumped capacitance model is valid if the BO number is less than 0 0.1, okay? And so this is the BO number equation. So let's go ahead and write this equation down. Now in this equation, guys, we have the volume and the area. So that's gonna be the volume and the area of the sphere because the object that was giving to us is in the shape of a sphere. Now, the equations for the volume and the area are giving to you guys on the reference manual and their math. So these are the equations that we're gonna use. Now, what we can do here, guys, is simplify this equation before we can plug in the numbers. It's just a little bit easier, right? So here we have the 4 is going to cancel. The pi also cancels. Here we have r to the power of 3 is going to cancel with this r squared. We're going to be left with r. And we can rewrite this as h times r and then over 3. And then we're going to divide it by k, okay? And now we can go ahead and plug in the numbers. It's just simpler this way. Now H, that's going to be the convective heat transfer coefficient, which is 75 watts per meters squared Kelvin. And then we're going to multiply it by the radius. Now we were giving the diameter, which is 60 millimeters. To get the radius, we just need to divide it by 2, which is 30. But here's the thing, we need to actually convert the units millimeters to meters because here we have meters, right? So that way the units cancel nicely. So what we're going to do here is multiply this by 30. So as we mentioned, this is millimeters. And now we need to convert it to meters. So we're just going to divide this by a thousand. So now we have meters here. And then we're going to divide it by K, which is the thermal conductivity of the copper, which was giving us 398 watts and then per meter Kelvin. Now, I forgot to divide this by 3, okay? So make sure that you guys don't forget that. And then also make sure that you always review your steps, okay? So that you don't miss anything, okay? Now, if you guys plug these numbers in your calculator, you're going to get about 0 0.0018. And then there's also another 8. And the other thing too is this number here is dimensionless, okay? So if we go over the units here, so they should cancel nicely so the watts here cancels here we have meters it's going to cancel with this meter squared and we're going to be left with per meter which is going to cancel with this per meter and then the kelvin also cancels okay so it's very important that you guys always check your units and make sure that they cancel okay so now let's go ahead and compare this number to 0 0.1 as you guys can see this number is less than 0 0.1 which means we can apply the lumped capacitance okay so the lumped capacitance is applicable since the bo number is less than 0 0.1 now the other thing too and we mentioned guys earlier when we covered the concept is that when the bo number is less than 0 0.1 that usually means that the temperature variation within the objects is small enough that it can be negligible right so which means here if we take a look at the multiple choice a is also correct so the temperature gradients within the sphere are negligible okay so the answers are going to be a and c so this is a great fe problem we covered a lot of concepts i really hope that you guys understood it now before you go i really recommend that you guys check out our latest video here where our tech lead trevor talks about how to supercharge your fe studies using chat gpt he shares a lot of great tips on how you can use chat gpt to really help you with your fe preparation so make sure that you guys check it out now, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Now, before you go, make sure that you guys check out this playlist here where we solve a lot of FE problems. And also, if you are looking for more FE problems that's going to help you pass your FE exam, don't forget to check out our courses. Now, thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a great week and I will see you guys on the next video. À la prochaine. Oh yeah,